Hi, right, welcome back to the Blackburn View, and we are previewing a potential League One fixture for next season in Blackburn against Wrexham in the FA Cup, of course, around uh, this Monday night. And we are joined by Harry, our regular Blackburn fan. Good evening, Harry. Good evening. And all the way from Phoenix, Arizona, we are delighted, representing Wrexham on the Terrace Talk this week, to be joined by Jason, the leader of the Wrexham Phoenix group out there. How are you, Jason? Um, great. How are you doing? Yeah, we're all good. Thank you. We're excited for this game on Monday night. How excited are the Wrexham fans to be travelling to you know, such a team with cup pedigree such as Blackburn? Uh, they're really excited. Um, I've been seeing social media blow up with how many people are going to be going to that match. Um, I, I think we got something around 7,000 tickets to go. and I'm pretty sure if it hasn't already sold out, it's going to be selling out soon. Yeah, Let's, let's start with that. Uh, Harry, because is this going to be a, a, a record for the FA Cup in that for the first time ever, there'll be more away fans at a game than there might be home fans? Uh, that generally looks like it might be the case, and it's really disappointing because I think it's a it's a real opportunity to get behind the team. We're playing a, t- uh, a side that, as good as they are in their division. They're two, two leagues below us. It's a good chance to win. And uh, people are saying, oh, uh, FA Cup, let's get out of it and let's focus on the league. I disagree. If we get a if we get a win in the FA Cup, that breeds confidence. We win one game, they can go win on win another game in the league. Um, so I think it's important that we do the most we can for this game, try and get as many fans down there. But fans have had fans just seem to have had enough. Yeah, yeah, and you can hardly blame them, can they, with performances like against Huddersfield? Let's let's talk about the good and the bad of of that game. Let's talk about the the good first of all. Goalkeeping performance. Um, improved? Yeah, well, as the pairs come back in, uh, I think it was uh, needed. Uh, Wallstead seems to have lost his head a little bit, needs to be taken out the firing line. Um, and although he didn't really have much to do, one big save in the second half, uh, sort of inspired a bit of confidence back into the back four. You notice we don't go and concede so many uh, silly goals, still conceding from set pieces, um, but you can't blame him for that. Uh, so a little bit more Confidence in the defence, a little bit more solid, hopefully something to build on. What else were you happy with? Well, it, it sort of started well and then got progressively worse. We we came out the blocks pretty well. And normally with Rovers, we start the games pretty well, but never have anything to show with them. But I think a goal in the first five minutes, uh, Wharton really alert, takes his finish well. Uh, but then after that, it just seemed to fall off a cliff. And, you know, a point in on on paper is one of the best results we've had in the last couple of months but uh i think it's one of the most disappointing because we've dropped points to teams around us yeah. but our season's not going to be based off uh how we do against teams like west brom and southampton but it's against these teams like huddersfield at home great opportunity to get a run going picking up three points and we uh throw it away from the from a winning position which is even worse considering I think Birmingham and Plymouth and maybe a couple other teams around us picked uh, picked up points um one of the things we 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 can't excuse um and make excuses for is obviously the amount of injuries that the rovers have have had this year it's been an unprecedented amount I can't remember. I don't know what's going on in the medical room but they must um they must be worked solid um would you agree that when Hayden Carter was injured that that it, it killed the momentum of the game which is, was suggested by the manager uh I mean there's a potential argument for that I don't I don't think um I don't think it made that much of a difference. I think a more detrimental impact was uh, losing Harry Pickering. Uh, that was, I think we we played a five at the back, which is a um, formation we haven't played all season. He comes off, Rankin Costello comes on, natural attacking fullback, uh, and he plays at right centre half and leave when he has two fullbacks and two centre halves on the pitch. It may, seemed obvious to me to go to a flat back four. He plays a right back at right centre half who loves to bomb on. Um, so when you've got two attacking fullbacks on that right hand side, both attacking, we're left exposed defensively, and I think they nearly scored. They had a big chance at the end of the second half. They nearly scored from. Um, so yeah, but it's like it's it's almost two uh, one step forward, two steps back. With Rovers injury, we get a few players back, uh, and now Hayden Carter and Harry Pickering uh, don't know to the extent of their injuries, but not doing us any favours, I'm afraid. <laughs> Yeah. Is uh, Sammy Smodix just t- looking tired or disinterested or both? 
Yeah, I mean, there's rumours that he doesn't want to be there. I think that's nonsense. I think he definitely wants to be there. Um, people reaction, uh, his reaction walking down the tunnel at the end of the game was noted by a couple of fans saying he was frustrated. Of course he's frustrated. Everyone's frustrated. We're not playing as well as we know we can do. We've uh, we've got a good side. We've got a side that's better better than our league position suggests. Um, we're just in a rut. I don't know. I, I don't know the answer of how to get out of it, but uh, I think he'll he'll be fine. Uh, he's gone a couple of games without a goal, but you got to remember just before this game he was scoring a hat trick in the last round of the cup, uh, and I think best part of twenty goals of the season already. Uh, I think he'll be fine. Okay. Well, one last thing: How do we get the crowds back to Ewood then? Is it is it going to be Venkis walking out, which isn't going to happen, or is it going to be a you know a new brand of manager with a an, a blistering attacking style of football? Yeah, well, it's the age-old question now how to get rid of his fans back. It's been trying; the numbers have been steadily falling since we've uh, since we've got relegated from the Premier League. Uh, I don't think a manager change does that. Uh, a, there was a, a bit of a boost when Thomason came in, um, obviously because we'd had Mowbray for five years, done a great service for us. But I think fans are sort of sort of took it as far as they could. could. Thompson comes in, a bit of fresh, new energy around the club, but that soon fizzled out. There's nothing long-term with a new manager bringing in. I think the only answer of how to bring um, crowds back in on a long-term is new ownership, and that's yeah. very unlikely. Yeah, it works for Lexham. Yeah, well, well, that links us nicely to uh, to the Welsh Club. Thanks, uh, Harry, for, for that. Um Jason, first of all, just a bit about yourself, because obviously you're, you're the guest here. Um, talk us through how you fell into Wrexham, how long you've, you've been a fan and um, what it's like over there from the, the other side of the pond, supporting a, a League Two side. Uh, it's it's tough with the early mornings. Um, it's really hard <laughs> to be up at 7 a.m. or 4 a.m. and have a pint and watch a game. So <laughs> that's a little difficult. Um, but I, I kind of discovered him like like most everyone else here in the U S um, you know, by the watching the documentary um, you know, I, I've even said before, I, I used to think that football was boring. Um, I had absolutely no interest in watching. Um, you know, I like I liked uh, sports like basketball where it's, you know, a hundred point games, you know, I, I could never figure out why anyone was interested in watching a game where it would end in a one nil score. And that just sounded boring to me. Um, but um, watching the documentary and then, um, you know, the several episodes in, I kind of got interested more in the club and wanting to know how the club was doing. And that's when I started uh, following them on social media, because uh, at the time we couldn't watch National League matches in the U.S. So uh, once uh, I think it was December came around, um, the National League finally allowed us to you know, stream matches here in the U.S. And I immediately jumped on and started streaming the matches. So I've been following them the since day one, uh, I've been able to watch matches here in the U.S. Um, so just a little bit over a year, and now I've been able to watch matches, and I've probably been supporting the club for about a year and a half. And new to soccer, new to Wrexham, new to football, <laughs> new to all of it. That's, that's it's a great story, and, and I, I suppose you have to understand from from this side is that for everybody. Um, loving Wrexham and the, and the story is that you do it. You have attracted obviously um, a dislike amongst obviously lots of other clubs who are just desperate to see this story blow up in smoke. And everybody, it's almost Wrexham becoming like a, the old Leeds or the, new, the the current Leeds, where everyone you know everyone just hates Wrexham. Um, you have any issues with that? You understand that over there that you know you are there to be got at because of the story. I, I find it amusing. Um, I think it's really funny, um, you know, but I, I can understand too. Uh, there, there's probably a lot of other clubs and a lot of other supporters of other clubs that are really tired of seeing and hearing about Wrexham in the media. Um, they want to hear about their own club. Um, so I can kind of see where they're coming from. They're just kind of tired of hearing that. And, you know, it's the big thing, right? Wrexham's the big deal right now. And, everyone wants their club to be the one that takes down the big Hollywood stars and puts them in their place. Um, but, you know, Rexon has been doing really well since the takeover. Um, you know, the, the owners seem to be doing things differently. They're doing things their way and it seems to be working for them. 
Okay. Um, what happened at uh, Newport County then? We'll talk about your recent form, which hasn't been too bad. I think you've, you've won three in the last five or, and lost two. One of them was uh, at, uh, at Newport, which is probably not one of the opponents you've wanted to lose. Uh, how, what was your view of that game? Um, that was a little rough. Um, you know, we've got – also, we've got several players that are out injured right now. A lot of our key players, Aaron Hayden um, and, well, some of several others – um, but we started off with a red card early on uh, where Will Boyle was sent off about 15, 17 minutes in, and it was just all downhill from there. Uh, they they really struggled to get their momentum going. Um, they just were a little bit sluggish. They were a little – seemed a little bit confused on what they were doing and what to do, and, you know, it just never kind of came around for us. We never really kind of clicked, I think, as a club. Um, and I – the one thing I've noticed about Wrexham is that anytime they lose a match, they come back the following match, whatever it is, 110% full throttle there to prove a point. Yeah. So I'm kind of hoping that that was just a one-off <laughs> with that match <laughs> the other day, but you know, you never know. Um, and what do you know about Blackburn Rovers then? Cause Wrexham obviously one of the third oldest clubs in the country uh, Blackburn not far behind them in terms of age um, so you know here we have got in terms of um, pedigree two of the oldest clubs in the whole United Kingdom playing each other yet uh, you haven't played each other that often but it's actually Wrexham who've got the, the better the better uh, the better results of the two Blackburn have only actually beaten Wrexham twice in the, in the whole history um, what, what do you know about Blackburn Jason? Um, I'll be honest. I don't know a whole lot. Um, <laughs> being, being new to football, um, I, it's really hard to get caught up with everybody else with the, all of their wealth of knowledge and experience and the time they spent invested into, um, the, the, the sport. Um, so I, I honestly don't know a whole lot. I know that, um, they're a league one team. Um, and might you know? be soon. They might be soon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the championship. Yeah. Yeah. Championship. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I know that, um, you know, they're, they're up there. Um, so it, it's definitely, it doesn't matter to me if they're first in the championship league or, or last um, they're in the championship league. So I, either way I see it as being a, a great match and a battle for Wrexham to, to, to try and overcome. Yeah, and of course in 1994-95, um, Blackburn were Wrexham, which had the story of Walker's millions and um, Premier League champions. Um, and now, um, well, Harry, how would, you, changed. how would you describe Rovers to a, to, to a Wrexham fan in the States now in, in a sentence? <laughs> Uh, well, as a place, I'd describe it as a tropical paradise, uh, <laughs> a real holiday location if you're looking for somewhere to go. Um, yeah, well, I think <laughs> Sleeping Giant comes to mind, a uh, team that had it all for a, a brief period of time, uh, now some way off it, I'm afraid. Yeah. Um, all right, let's talk about um, likely lineups then, shall we, uh, for the FA Cup game. This is a Monday night game, which... Um, is probably going to suit Wrexham better than it is uh, Blackburn, I'd imagine. Um, Harry, um, he's going to go full. Sc- There's no reason not to go full strength here, is there? No, as far as I'm concerned, we go full strength. Only changes I see being made is um, Rankin Costello coming back into the starting 11 uh, to replace Pickering, who's come out for an injury. Uh, same with Scott Wharton. That's a straight, straight swap with Hayden Carter uh, based off injuries. Uh, and maybe Andrew Moran coming in for the uh, the new lad from Villa. I wasn't 100% convinced with him on his debut. Maybe needs a bit more time to settle. And I thought Moran did all right off the bench. So okay. apart from that, keep it the same. Okay. Um, and then Jason, um, same again for Exum. Obviously got suspensions, but Mullen, Dalby, yeah. Start up front for you. Yeah, also kind of coming out full strength. Um, you know, we've got some injuries up front. So, you know, if uh, Stephen Fletcher is feeling better and up to it, um, maybe starting Stephen Fletcher. Um, if not, probably Dalby. Um, they've been Dalby's been doing really, really well up front for us, um, creating a lot of opportunities for Mullen and some of the other players. Um, and we've got Man, we you know, we've also got so many injuries; it's it's insane. Um, but you know, we'll have Elliot Lee in there, um, James McLean. They've both been doing really, really solid. 
Uh, Max Cleworth in the back, Ben Tozer. Um, we'll probably, if Barnett is feeling uh, better, if he's going back from injury, we'll probably put him in there in the right wing. Um, I know Jacob Mendy is out right now playing for his country. I'm not sure when he comes back, but if he comes back, I'm pretty sure we'll definitely have him in there. Okay. Are you surprised that no one's come in for Elliot Lee yet? I am. Um, I was I was really surprised. I, I was more surprised or maybe thrilled and excited to see that Lee just signed another three years with Apple, with, with Wrexham. So I was really happy to see that. Okay. All right. Should we get some score predictions then uh, for this one? Um, before we do that, I say I'll let you just have a little chat um, with each other about um, you know how you think the game's going to go. Um, Harry? Uh, well, I think I, I can't say I've watched too much uh, Rex on this season. Uh, you say that they're a bit hate, hated, and to be honest, I, I would love for it to crash and burn, but um, <laughs> it's going to be a... And, and that is jealousy. I know it's jealousy, but <laughs> um, I think it'll be a good game. I think two two teams that play good football, although we're a bit further down there in the table, uh, we still play some good stuff. Uh, it will be tight, I think. Um it's it's an unusual one because although Wrexham are two leagues below us, I don't think anyone would be surprised if they won. Uh, so I think it's close. I think it's closer than the sort of difference in uh, league position suggests. Um, but yeah, I, I'm excited game. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, well, and, um, I know Wrexham has a has a history of of winning some big matches. Um, you know, the years back beating Arsenal. Um, I know last year in the FA Cup, um, they, I believe they also won against another championship team. Um, and I mean, who knows? I'm really hoping for a really good match. Uh, of course, I'm hoping Wrexham wins, but, um, you know, they, they have the reputation of being giant slayers. And I know you guys, you're saying that they're the sleeping giants. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, either way, I think it's going to be exciting. Yeah, well, if memory serves me correctly, I think that both teams got knocked out by the same team. I think Sheffield United beat Wrexham and then went on to beat us in the quarterfinals. So, little yeah. they both got beat by the same team. And a heartbreaking quarterfinal for us. We were about a minute and a half away from Wembley for the first time, the new Wembley for the first time in our history and wasn't meant to be. Wow. Maybe Let's uh, let's get some predictions then, shall we? Um, Blackburn versus Wrexham. Harry, you're at home, so you get to go first. Well, my history of predictions is about as bad as they can get, and I think the epitome of that was last week when I made two predictions and they were both wrong. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. Uh, it really wouldn't surprise me if it went either way. Um, I'm going to be optimistic. I'm going to say Rovers sort of last week... We're a little bit, a little bit more solid. Maybe that starts something to come, uh, and we'll win two nil. Okay, Jason, give us, give us what your head says, what your heart says. Um. Well, my heart's going to say also two nil, two nil. Um, but my head's saying that it's going to be a, it's going to be a battle, and um, I'm thinking it's going to be three two. Amazing. Well, for neutral, let's hope it's three two because it's uh, it's alive on uh, TV on Monday night. And Harry, we won't see you on here next week to preview uh, the QPR game because you'll be at uh, Chile Ewood Park cheering on your team. Um, uh, Jason, have you managed to get over to to, to Wrexham uh, as of yet? I thought saw some photos which suggested you you have visited. I have. Yeah, um, I was. Uh, I I made the drive with my wife and family out to San Diego when they were out here for their U S tour. Right. Um, so I got to watch the, the, the match in the U S versus Manchester United. Um, not, not the way I wanted to watch my first match either, because that's when <laughs> Paul Holland got, got body slammed and and, bro- and punctured a lung and he was out for the first half of the, the first couple of months. Um, but my wife and I um, took our anniversary trip out to Wrexham uh, last October. And Amazing. When we were in San Diego, we made a friend who uh, invited us to come to a match and sit in his seats in one of the suites. And so we were able to watch the match from one of the suites. Um, you couldn't ask for better seats in the whole the whole race course. It was incredible. Um, and that was versus Salford. Um, and I was sitting uh, arm's length away from Nikki Butts. 
Um, during that match, she was right next to me. Um, and, uh, you know, Wrexham was down uh, 2-1. And then they scored in the 85th minute and the 87th minute to go up 3-2. <laughs> Amazing. And, uh, yeah, and I was looking over at Nicky Butts and he wasn't very happy. Uh, I think he just stormed off at that point. <laughs> But yeah, it was amazing. Uh, the country is beautiful, and we're already talking about when we're going to go back. Brilliant. All right. Well, you must keep in touch with us if you're ever over here again. I'm sure. Um, yeah, if you're ever here again, we'll uh, especially if you're playing Blackburn, it would be good to good to catch up with you both again. Okay. Enjoy the game. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Harry, and thank you so so much, Jason. Sorry to keep you busy from your morning schedule. What time is it there? I mean, it's eight p.m. Recording this here. What are you on now there? Uh, it's 1 p.m. right now, uh, so in the middle of the workday. Hopefully my uh, <laughs> boss doesn't catch me. <laughs> right. We'll let you go. Thank you so much. Enjoy it. Blackburn Wrexham, folks, comment below as well. Wrexham fans, Blackburn fans, what do you think the scoreline is going to be? And cheers for both of you. Nice one, fellas. Thank you. Nice one. Thank you.